small joints. You want to see things popping into your hamstrings, your calves, just lots of bubbles that just really, really flows, really pulls all together. It is January 3rd and I'm training legs today. Matt has me doing a giant set. So Multiple giant sets. What? Multiple giant sets. Multiple giant sets. Well, well I'm going to show one, actually the whole entire workout. But I'm going to show one round of the giant set that I'm doing right now. And I'm going to do every exercise back to back. So you can keep the counter rolling. And um, I'm not going very heavy at all on anything because this is really about, you know, lots of volume, lots of intensity, not a lot of recovery, no recovery during the whole giant set. So we're going to start with this one. I'm a wood, so I have like nothing shielding my skin and my bone right here. So I'm going to start. I started my giant set with this lever arm squat machine and I really like this particular angle whether it's on this machine or really you can create this angle using the Smith machine but I really like having my feet out in front of me because it really allows me to focus more on the glutes and the hamstrings I mean you're always gonna have quad recruitment when you're on the way down but when your feet are right underneath you it tends to be very quad and knee dominant so having this angle with my feet out in front of me really uh, allows me to focus more and more on what I want to. My next uh, exercise in the giant set uh, here I'm <laughs> I'm trying to explain how when you get tired you don't want to throw your head back uh, because that's something that I see a lot of people get exhausted and then they throw their neck back and you want to keep that neutral spine alignment all right so next up in the giant set is a unilateral press here so I do it kind of rapid fire the most important thing on this exercise and whether you're doing unilateral or both legs at the same time is when you get to the top you don't want to lock your knee out because not only does it disengage uh, your leg but it also puts way too much pressure on the knee because that hyperextension when you're pushing a, a weight around is is really not safe so it's so important for both engagement and safety to make sure that you just get right to that point at the top where you're just about to lock out the knee and you keep it engaged and I just kept going and going and going I did, ended up doing I think I did four full giant sets, so I was pretty tuckered out. This was like my second okay, one. <laughs> so next up on the giant set, we have exercise number three, was the uh, the seated hamstring machine. So I did seated curls. I really like this one. I can really focus by pushing on the, the bar in front of me and keeping my core really tight. I can really focus on pulling with my hamstrings. Really important is I like to keep my feet flexed and squeeze the glutes. You have to kind of go out of your way to squeeze your glutes and kind of tilt the lower back a little bit and really crunch hard on the glutes and you're gonna primarily feel it in your hamstrings still. But um, it's really easy to um, kind of pull the hips up and let the legs just kind of swing back and forth and you know, it doesn't, it's not gonna give you results by just going through the motions. You have to kind of force feed the muscle sometimes when you're doing exercise. Um, to really add a little bit more to this, I uh, held it at the top of the movement, 10 seconds and then nine seconds and then all the way down to one second. And that, when you're fatigued and you can't do a full revolution every single one and you're like, okay, I'm done. That's the point where I like to find different uh, principles that allow me to push a little bit more blood into the muscle. So I, I try to increase the intensity that way. The next exercise in the giant set was one that uh, Matt has me do a lot lately. And it's basically, it's a hack squat with a glute thrust combo. So we come down and I, t I turn the toes in just a little bit because on this particular one, when the, when the toes are out, it kind of forces a little bit of that tension out of the glutes and it pulls the tension to the outer quad. So by turning the toes in a little bit, 
it actually helps me really fire that part of my glute muscle that I really want to. So uh, we come down and then we thrust the hips up at the top. Really obviously pushing down on the heels so your heels connect to your glutes and that really intensifies things. I think I was pretty, <laughs> I was pretty tuckered out at this point. I was having a hard time walking, but we had one more exercise to finish off this giant set, and that was the laying down leg press. And this one, uh, I think after the first set, I told Matt just to not have any weight at all. Oh no, I do have a little bit of weight on there. I think I have a 45 pound plate. But I think after this giant set, I said, you know what, my legs are so fatigued after the, all those other exercises. I just. I can't even, you know, feel my muscles if I, you know, don't, if I have weight on there. So um, at this point, I'm just doing this, uh, this range right here so I can hit everything nice and strong all the way to the finish line. It's really important when you get fatigued to try your best to stay uh, in form because it's really easy to get out of form when you get you can get sloppy. That's a lot of times when I see people throw their head back. That's another reason why it's good to finish off with an exercise like this that really sets you up and keeps your uh, your form intact when you're super fatigued. Two more just like that. I am properly tapped out, but I, there's still always something left. <laughs> I'm gonna do some triceps. All right, here we go. Exercise number one in the triceps is a weighted glute thrust. Uh, this exercise, I see it done a lot, and it's the most effective for building the glutes because you're working through the range of your hips and you're really taking pretty much everything else out of it. Uh, when you have a little bit of weight, there is a little bit of recruitment in the quads, but you wanna try to stay away from that as much as possible. This most, I, most definitely is the most effective glute building exercise you could possibly have. But it's hard to do it when you're by yourself uh, to do it with a barbell. I really feel it the most with a barbell, but I have to have Matt there to put it on my hips for me. So um, that's one thing to keep in mind is that the most effective glute thrust you wanna do with a partner. Um, the next exercise in the tricep was, uh, so, well, single leg ups and then I alternated sides. I stayed on one side the whole time. I feel like I can put a little bit more blood into that side of my leg when I do one side all the way through and then the other side versus, you know, alternating one and then one. Uh, really important on this is to keep the neck in a neutral alignment. So I see sometimes people fling their leg back, throw their head back and arch their lower back, and you wanna try to keep your core nice and tight, keep it in, keep the head straight. Uh, on all leg exercises, squats, deadlifts, leg ups, whatever it is, um, really try to avoid throwing that head back. I see that so much, and even exercises like this. You notice that my, my neck is in that neutral alignment. Keep the chin in, keep the back straight, uh, kind of tilt the lower back a little bit. This is actually really effective if you, if you tuck the hips under too. You can hit the glutes in different ways. So this is actually not something that's only effective when you tilt your lower back backwards. So, I mean, there are so many different ways that you can do squats. I wanted to finish strong, so I dropped the weight and I finished with nothing <laughs> and nothing left. And uh, then I thought I was done and not so much because apparently I was not done with my workout. I got a little excited there, so I thought I'd share my excitement with you guys. <laughs> All right. I'm doing, I'm going to finish the calf. I'm doing a super set with calf. So for calves, I started out with the seated calf raise machine, and I like to do full range, and I used to do toes in, toes out, toes forward, and I honestly just find the best engagement when my toes are just straight out in front in line with my knees. So I've been just doing it like that lately. And I, you know, I, I really feel just the best connection that way. So I've been doing it like that more lately. Um, and then I did the machine, calf raise machine. I discovered right after I started that I am short. I already knew that, but I discovered that I was pretty much too short for this machine, but I am a determined person, and so I did it anyway. 
<laughs> there are some machines I just literally can't do. I am five feet tall. Yes, I know. Let the jokes begin. I know, I know. Um, I stopped growing when I was like, I think in fifth grade. I think I stopped, well, my height, obviously. <laughs> anyway, uh, again, toes forward. The knees, you want to have a slight bend at your knees. So you don't ever want to lock your knees out completely, especially at this angle. It can be very dangerous. And then also you take your tension out of your calves. So you don't want that. a little bit more on calves this season because it's actually part of my my legs that I feel like I've always kind of taken for granted as being pretty well developed. But this past year I really saw them almost like they started going down a little bit. So I'm gonna build them, build back up. Quarter turn. It's hard to do after you just train cows, huh? I know. Quarter turn. Quarter turn. Good. That's it. Yeah.